In this video, we will explore about Docker networking. We will understand what is a bridge network and basically how a Docker networking works. It is very important to understand that because this is a way that you can understand how we can connect between different containers. And this one is also going to be kind of a follow-up video to the Docker port binding video that I published recently on my channel. So maybe you would want to watch this before you dive into that one because in this one we explain how ports are working and how you can bind ports to access them from your local host. Let's get started. Okay, so now that we understood a little bit about how port binding works, let's also try to understand how network configuration is applied to the group of containers that you may want to launch in the future. Now, it is critical to understand because in the future, you might come up with tens or even hundreds of containers that you want to execute for some reason. And you probably want to know how to allow them to talk to each other and also how to prevent some containers to communicate with other containers for whatever reason, especially security reasons. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So what is even a Docker network? Before we explain this, let's understand first what is a network in real life. So a network is just a bunch of network devices that know how to talk to each other. Take this to a real life example. Right now, in whatever location you are, you have some phone device or laptop or computer that all of them are knowing to talk to each other because th they are in the same network. If you watch this from your home or from a coffee house, whatever location it is, there are going to be some network devices that are knowing how to talk to each other because they are in the same network. And this is something that we have in all the houses around the world, right? We have network devices like smart TVs, phones, and stuff like that that are knowing to talk to each other. So if we take this real life example and compare it to the Docker world, Basically, a Docker network is just a group of containers that each container knows to talk to each other. And this is a good privilege because it can allow us to separate group of containers from other group of containers, right? So we could create as much as networks as we want and we could configure them in a way that we could just separate the connection between them. So you could create a group of four containers in one network and you could create another four containers in another network and basically you could prevent from green containers, so to speak, to access purple containers. And that is good. That is something that you want to do for security reasons and not only security but for comfort reasons. When you are looking into a bunch of containers that are running, it is a good thing to check out in what network interface those containers are running because it will give you an indication about what containers should communicate with each other and how they are related. So this is what we are going to take a look right now. We are going to see how to create a new network and we are going to see how to run those containers in different networks. Now just a quick side note, when we try to access a random container that is launched without port binding, meaning without the dash p argument, we know that we cannot access to the container. So the really main reason for that, it is because every time a container is being created, Docker attaches it to a separated network. And that's why the only way to connect to a container is by using port binding. So that's something that we want to understand because this is a very special behavior of Docker networks, the behavior that only the containers inside the network could access to each other, but none of the network devices, so to speak, that are outside of this network could access the containers unless the port binding is used. And that is something that I wanted to specify. Now let's get our hands dirty a bit by writing a group of commands in our terminal and create some networks to really understand how it works and how it behaves. All right, so let's start by understanding what Docker network commands we are allowed to use. So I will just say Docker network. You can see that I receive a list of commands that I can run to manage my networks. And you can connect a container to a network, you can create a new network and you can also delete networks if you'd like to. Now let's go ahead and start by docker network ls to list the networks that I have right now. And you can see that I have three networks already running. And those are the networks that are created by default when you installed docker as I talked about it in the presentation. Now you can also see in this table that we also have a column that is called driver. 
driver basically identifies the behavior of the network. So for example, if you take a container and you attach it to a network that its driver is null, then basically you prevent all network access from that container. And if you take a container and you just put it in a network that its driver is bridge, this is the most common network driver type. And this is just a network type that only allows containers inside the network to communicate to each other as we talked about it in the presentation. Now we also have one other unique kind of a driver that is called host and that is something that is a little bit out of scope of this tutorial but basically it allows direct access from the local host. And so the bridge driver is the most common driver that you will see across the Docker networks that you inspect and you just create them or delete them. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see how we can see the networks of the running containers. Now I do have some containers that are running in the background. Those are just happen to be testing containers that I already prepared in the port binding tutorial. So I'm going to rely on those running containers to show the next examples. So by using docker inspect, we can see more information about containers and more docker devices like docker networks. But now I want to inspect into a container. So I will say mongo second, and this will show me some wider information about the container. If we zoom out a bit, then you can see that this container has some networks. We never specified what network we want this container to run at, but Docker did this job for us and it executed this container in this bridge container. And you can see that it has an IP address here, it has a default gateway, so that is good that Docker takes responsibility automatically to do this for us. And we will see similar result if we also say docker inspect mongo third, right? We will see that it is again inside this bridge network and you can see that it has the same default gateway and you can see that it has a different IP address. The previous one was 0 0.2 in the end. So this means that by default, if you do not specify a network when you execute a container, basically it creates it in the first bridge network that is available and that is by default created by Docker. Okay, so now that we understood this, let's try to create a network and run some containers in that network and see how it behaves if we try to access from one container that is in network X to another container that is in network Y, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and say docker network create, and we should call this net one. And now that we have done this, then we can actually go ahead and say docker network ls, and you will see that we have net one. Now also pay attention how it used by default the driver of bridge, which is the most commonly used driver that I talked about. Now let's repeat this command by saying docker network create net2. Okay, so now we have two networks. All right, so on the left side, I will do the actions with network1 and on the right side, I will do the actions with network2 just to have a nice separation between those. So in here, let's go ahead and start the container with the network1. So I'm going to go ahead and again, use Mongo just because we already use that and it is comfortable to simulate things. So I'm going to say docker run in detach mode and I'm just going to say network dash dash network and I'm going to specify its name net1 and this should run the name of mongo1, right? We want to give our container a name and finally the image name. So we will say mongo and let's say enter. Okay, so now we are having one more Mongo container. So if we go ahead and say docker inspect Mongo1, because this is the name of our container, then we can definitely see a change in the gateway because the previous ones were 172.17. So now we can see 18. So that's a good change. And you can also see that in the network section, we have net1. So this is a great job that we have done here. And now let's go ahead and do the similar action in our green terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and say docker run dash d dash dash network net2 and dash dash name is going to be mongo2 and again the image name will be mongo. So I'm going to go ahead and run it 
And again, if we say Docker inspect Mongo2, you can see that we see somehow similar result, but the name of the network is different. And you can see that we have gateway now 172.19.01. So those are definitely good indications about how those containers are running in separated networks. Okay, so now that we have done this, then we want to test a couple of things here. We want to test if two containers could talk to each other from network number two, and we might also want to test out if container from network number two could talk to a container from network number one. And obviously we want to see a negative result in that case. Okay, so it makes sense maybe to use the up arrow a couple of times and basically execute one more container inside network two. So I'm going to bring in the same command, but let's only change the name of the container, right? So I'm going to make this bigger a bit and the dash dash name is going to be different. Let's call this two underscore test okay because this is going to be a container that we are going to test some things from it okay so we created this and let's clean everything and continue all right so now we want to understand how we can test the things so we have a very special command in docker that allows us to interactively connect to our container it is equivalent to executing just Linux commands and these commands just allows us to execute different Linux commands on this container. So by executing different Linux commands, we can actually achieve the goal of testing connections because we can use a command line utility like ping, telnet or something else that will really help us to check out the connection across different containers. So this could be done by using the docker exit command. Exit command gives you the option to execute commands inside a container. You can definitely see this from the description of this command. All right, so now we want to execute commands interactively. So what we are going to do here is we are going to use the dash it argument and this should be followed by the container name. So I'm going to specify the newest container name that we created mongo2 underscore test and right after that we specified the name we should be specifying our command name now the command that we want to execute is a command that will allow us to basically interactively execute bash commands so that's why we will specify forward slash bin forward slash bash now this is a good trick that is used a lot when you execute commands on a container because once you press on enter then you can see that now we are inside the container you can see the root user you can see that we are inside a container because we see this weird id here so this is good we can use something like ls and you can see that i see linux files so we are totally inside that container so now we want to execute some commands that will allow us to update packages this container uses ubuntu if i remember correctly and on top of it it runs the mongo so i can go ahead and just say apt dash get update so i'm updating the recent packages inside this container and this will take a minute okay so after this has been completed let's go ahead and install the telnet package inside this container so it's going to be apt get install telnet and I'm just going to approve it by saying here why. Okay, so we installed Telnet. Let's clear our screen. And now we should be having access to the container that its name was Mongo2, right? So I can go ahead and say Telnet Mongo2, but we want to specify the port number because the Mongo2 container uses the MongoDB service inside of it, right? So it probably exposes this port of 27017. And if we press on enter, you can definitely see that I have a connection established. It says connected to Mongo2. And this means that we have done a great job because those two containers are running in the same network and we proved that they have access to each other. Okay, so now I'm going to use Ctrl C to get out of this one. Okay, so we are back in our container. Now I'm going to try to access from this container to a container that is not inside this network. And if you remember, let's use a new tab here. I'm going to list my containers. 
If you remember, I have a container that is in network one that its name is Mongo one. And if we want to check its IP address, then its IP address is that one, 172.18.0.2. So I'm going to try both ways. I'm going to first try by host name, which is Mongo one. And then I'm going to try with IP address and both of the cases should throw us an error about how the connection has not been established. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say telnet mongo1 and it's going to use this port number. Okay, so you can already see that it behaves weird. So this means that we should expect to see bad result here. Okay, so good result could not resolve mongo1. So let's see with the IP address, what will happen? 172.18.0.2. And again, you can see that it is about to fail. So this really proves out the entire network system and how it works with Docker. And just remember that using networks is just a good way separating your containers and a good way to decide what containers you want to communicate and what containers you want to separate from other group of containers. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed in this one. Let me know if you have any questions about how Docker networking works. And as usual, if you enjoyed it, please consider hitting the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you very soon.